This is a guidebook for warm, affirming child rearing. I'm watching this and I'm just reminded of the type of parent that I want to be. Just that moment of the dad connecting with his kids in a way that they understand, you know, they're gonna take that with them for the rest of their lives. This moment of, you know, my dad acknowledging my feelings and helping me to, like, understand them. Yeah, it's beautiful. Let's have fun! No! Yes. I hate fun! <laughs> <laughs>
wow, this would be a great secret hiding place. Yeah. It's almost like it was written by kids if kids could write excellent screenplays. Oh, man, yeah. Because, like, this is how we would want you to parent. I love the design, though, when she comes, when she finds Totoro and he, because she follows the tiny one. Right. That's how she gets lost. She follows the tiny one. And then there's the medium one. And then they skip large and extra large. Just to, like, house-sized. May said that she saw a Totoro here. A Totoro? Mm-hmm. This way! But how often does parents like, I'm not going in there, guys. Hey, wait up! Here? Mm-mm. Last <laughs> time the tunnel led to Totoro's tree. I didn't see another path to take. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> I feel Stretching that. Stretching his back, ugh. Hey, come back! I also love, like, all the backgrounds in this are so painterly. Uh-huh. And kind of, you know, impressionist paintings. <laughs> It's just beautiful. Quit laughing! I really did see Totoro! I'm not lying. And they stop. Yep. And the dad's response is just great here. <laughs> Her little Daddy. face. It's not a lie, Dad. Hmm. Don't worry, May. Satsuki and I believe you, and I bet you I know what happened. You must have met one of the spirits of the forest. That means you're a very lucky girl. But you can't always see the spirits. You can only see them when they want you to. Hey, let's give the forest spirits a proper greeting. A greeting? Of course, come on, let's go. Dad, she says the hole disappeared. Then right now the forest spirits don't want to be seen. But Dad, I want to see them too. Maybe you will, if you're lucky. But there's no, okay girls, enough of this Nip nonsense. Yep. It's been around since long ago. Back in the time when trees and people used to be friends. Back in the time when trees and people used to be friends. But he's got the same when sense of wonder tree, they do. I knew this would be a good place for our family to live. I think it'll make your mother feel right at home. So, let's give this tree a nice greeting and go eat our lunch. Then I want to write a letter to Mom and tell her all about this. I will too! Hey! Attention! Thank you for watching over May and making us feel so welcome here. Please continue to look Please after us. Please continue to look after us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can see that because all of that's very Eastern. Yeah. You know, this is not just like, oh, this is just a Japanese thing. It's just a cute dad thing. Maybe squirrels live here. <gasps> squirrels? <laughs> I think rats eat acorns. Maybe they're rats. No. Ew. Squirrels are better. So you're, you're tearing up a little right now. Why of course I am. Are you kidding me? <laughs> What, what got you there? It just the, um, just that moment of the dad connecting with his kids in a way that they understand. And that's the thing that they're going to, you know, they're going to take that with them for the rest of their lives. This, this moment of, you know, my dad acknowledging my feelings and helping me to like understand them and whatever. Yeah. You know, they're going to look back if they grow up. Hopefully they uh, keep seeing Totoro's and cat buses their whole life because <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, but if not, and they grow up and, you know, grow out of childish things or whatever, they'll look back at that and just say, oh, my dad was such a great, positive, affirming, loving guy. Yeah. Right. So often we get caught up in adulting and adulting's hard. You it's know? no fun and it sucks. And so often it's like, no, I'm working so you can play. So just go play and let me work. I edit in my basement and my kids come down every day and want to chat and do stuff. And it's like, yeah, I suck at it. You're their best friend. Dad, you be the flower shop, okay? And I'm my kid's best friend. And it, how does it feel when your best friend's like, I, I can't, I don't have time for you. But like the reality of it is I also can't just stop what I'm doing all the time and oh, right. play with him until sundown because then I won't get sleep. Look, it's morning! Mm. Hey, wake up! Right. You know, like, you have to have that balance, but how often where I'm I'm kneeling down to hug people goodnight and then they dogpile on me and I don't want to be dogpiled on. It's the end of the day. I'm kind of grumpy. I just wanted to give them a quick hug goodnight. Or how often they tell me things and I'm just like, ugh, okay, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, tell me your story about you and your friends on the trampoline. That's great, and I'm just thinking of all I have to do tonight. And I'm not saying I'm always like that. Very often, I'm the only dad on the playground who's on the playground with who's my like, kids. Yeah, doing stuff and yeah. scrambling around. Which yeah. is why I, I've started yoga, because... We're getting old, man. Yeah, <laughs> well, the old. roller slides, they hit, they hit differently. Those are, ooh. <laughs> also, I don't think they're designed for, like, 200-pound dudes. <laughs> 
but I'm watching this and I'm just reminded of the type of parent that I want to be. Yeah. You know, that when she's talking about Totoro and he says he's going along with the mythology and he's making stuff up along with her. Yeah. Uh, or he says, yeah, well, I guess the spirits don't want to show themselves right now, so we'll just come back later. Instead of stop being ridiculous, there's no such thing as forest spirits. I'm eating Mountain Mist, but it's Mountain Dew flavored popcorn. I've got sour power, mainly because this color palette is approximately my feelings watching <laughs> my neighbor Totoro. This might be one of my favorite flavors. Lisa'spopcorn.com forward slash cinema therapy. You can get a subscription box. They'll ship you six different flavors a month. Granny, what's wrong? I don't know. She said she wouldn't stop crying unless I brought her to you. She said that? May, be reasonable. You know you have to stay with Granny today because I have school and Dad's teaching at the university. And she just Granny, will not be consoled. School to go. Can't you just stay with Granny until then? She's been so good up till now, weren't you, May? So she's obviously, you know, dealing with stuff from mom not being around. But the thing I love about this is, you know, well, May is, I don't know, three or four or something like that. We can do. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I'll see what we can do and brings her to class. <laughs> Boom, and she's just happy as a clam. <laughs> and of course, all these like first or second graders are responding exactly the way they would. It's just the kids are so much like real kids. Yeah. Like completely irrational. <laughs> That's a C right kid drawing if I've ever that seen one. That is 100% one of my kids Are you drawing. Telling, May? It's a big Totoro. <laughs> Shh. May, try to keep quiet, will you? Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that is my daughter. <laughs> be quiet. Sure. Sure, I'll be quiet. <laughs> one of the things that I love about this movie is it just nails little kids. They have their own logic mm -hmm. that is not logical. Mm -hmm. And. You know, to me, like, this is this is absolutely the correct behavior that I should be doing. Yeah, well, and our fans have asked us, you know, show us more positive examples of what healthy relationships look like. So let's talk about attachment theory for a second, always okay. attachment theory. Uh, healthy attachment and then insecure attachment. There's anxious and avoidant and ambivalent. And we can, we'll, we'll actually go deep into all of that in a different video. May is healthily attached. So with unhealthy attachments, you have either people who are never there for you, so you learn just to shut down and you just take care of yourself and you don't form connections. Or you can be you can be anxiously attached because people are sometimes there for you and sometimes not, sometimes loving, sometimes harsh. And oh, judgmental. okay, so it's like unpredictable. It's yeah, and it's, so. yeah, and that's where the anxiety comes from is I don't know what I'm going to get. Right. Whereas May has a father and a mother and a sister who, I mean, they're not completely... They're not perfect. It's not unre unrealistic. Her sister starts with, May, be reasonable. May, it's okay. I'll be home in two hours. And I'm not saying we should always give kids exactly what we want, but sometimes we're afraid to because we don't want to spoil them or because we don't want to teach them that they get what they, anything they want. But there's a difference be between, I would like ice cream for breakfast and can I just hang out with you because I'm scared or I'm lonely. Right. You know, there's a huge difference there. And her sister's like, okay, we'll see what we can do. I mean, throughout this whole film, there's actually not a ton of conflict here. And there's not a ton, like towards the end, yeah. there's there's some tension and some danger. But for most of the film, there's not a lot going on except for just people kind of being there's decent not even, to each other. There's not really a plot. Like, if you ask me to describe what happens in this movie, it's like a family moves to the countryside. They meet some forest spirits or monster things that are cute. One of them gets lost. She gets found. The end. That's literally all that happens. And it's, I just want to just live in inside of it. I want to cut it open like a tauntaun and just insert me in there. <laughs> it just goes to show oftentimes uh, filmmakers have to create conflict and tension out of where there doesn't need to be any because they yeah. think it's necessary. And I don't know, I think we all have enough drama in our real lives that sometimes it's nice just to sit with something that just is, like you said, it's just a warm blanket. There's yeah. something so reassuring about this entire film. Well, and I mean, just to address the filmmaking here, that's incredibly hard to pull off. Like, how do you make something like this where there's no conflict and it's not boring? Yeah. Because this could tip into boring real easy. And it, I wasn't bored. The answer is to be really charming, to be really warm, and to be really imaginative. I guess that's it. Yeah. And put things on screen that people have never seen before. May, the doctor said that mom's not doing well, so she doesn't get to come home this weekend. <gasps> no fear! It can't be helped, May. What if she came home early and it made her even worse? It's not fair! <laughs> May, we just have to wait a little longer. No! You want 
to die, May? Is that what you want? <laughs> no! <laughs> You're such a baby. Just grow up. This part's a little less warm blankety. Yeah. I mean, this is the one bit of con like real conflict in the film, right? Is that scene. Come on, May. That is so grating because I have a daughter and have heard that before. <laughs> Don't worry, your father is going to stop by the hospital. The doctors say your mom just has a cold. She should be home next Saturday. This is just like last time. They said mom just had a little cold and she'd be home in a few days. Granny, what will we do if she dies? Sasuke. Maybe she's dead already. <laughs> I have an 11 year old daughter who very often has to be the adult. Mm -hmm. Such sweet girls. But every once in a while I'm reminded that she's a child. Just slips back into that, yeah. yeah. Where she, well, she's used to being stoic and being the big sister. Yeah. Okay. What I want to talk about is we sometimes have a hard time with children because children have strong emotions just like us mm -hmm. and they don't know how to make sense of them. They don't know how to process them and we just want them to grow up. Right. The issue that I've seen in therapy and in life is first of all, most adults don't know how to healthily process <laughs> their emotions. Yeah, I need to grow up. <laughs> or, I haven't gotten there yet. Or to express their fear or their sadness or their anger in a healthy way that brings people closer together. Sure. But we expect kids to somehow do this. Yeah, you magically be better at this than me. Just yeah. do that now. Yeah, and so here's May and she's worried about her mom. And now if you look at it from an adult perspective or even from a big sister perspective, May's being ridiculous. Sure. What a mom needs to stay there. If she comes home, she could get worse so she she just needs to stay at the doctor's office. But to me, she's been so looking forward to having her mom home. And all she can think of is how unfair it is that her mom has to stay. Yeah. I'll give her the corn that I picked. That will make her better. And so she says, it's unfair, it's unfair. And what she's really looking for is for her sister to put her arms around her and say, it's not fair, you're right. Like, it's really sad. And I'm really sorry. But instead, her sister's just scolding her, lecturing her, correcting her. And we do this with kids, and we do this with each other. Is we, lull, we, is we scold, we lecture, we correct, yeah. instead of just empathizing. And this isn't just a kid thing. It's just especially a kid thing. But all of us need empathy. All of us need sympathy. All of us just need to, for someone to acknowledge, yeah, this sucks. Instead, her sister tries to get her to change her behavior by being rational. And then when that doesn't work, she shames her. Do you want mom to die? Is that it? Yeah. Which, of course, she doesn't. So May, again, if you're looking at it as an adult, you might think, well, May's refusing to be satisfied. She's saying it's unfair, mom can't come home, but she also doesn't want her mom to die. So May won't be happy no matter what. And we think, how ridiculous, how childish, how selfish, how... But really, it's just an expression of pain. Right. And so when it comes to people and emotions, but especially children and their emotions, we often look at, at validation as if it's this... Um, it's a word for the week. Oh, I need validation. I need to be validated. Need validate my feelings. Me. And, we, and we, we talk about it like that as if it's only weak people need that. Yeah, if you were strong, you wouldn't ever need validation. You could just be your own man and to be mad. It's, it's like a man thing. Yeah. Every man is an island. Well, it's a man thing, <laughs> but then it's also a woman thing when women are taught like that being vulnerable makes them weak. Sure. And so women who want equal standing and equal status also do, okay, what men have always done, which is they stuff their emotions. You have to be stoic and stuff your emotions. So that's a, that's a backfire. But the simple fact is we all need to feel understood. It's not weakness for someone to say you're not crazy for feeling this or I totally get where you're coming from or even, you know, I've never been there, but I'm here for you, right? right? And so what ends up happening that May runs she runs away from her sister. She's trying to run towards her mother. We all try to run to the place or the people with whom we feel safe. And that will lead us to run away from situations, from obligations, from relationships when we should stay. And if she were, if she were older and had the learning to do so, she could have said, I just need you to hold me right now and tell me that it's going to be okay. Yeah. Or can you just tell me that it sucks that mom's not here, right? And that's another thing is... 
Well, and so many of us as adults don't have that tool set, right? Like we don't know what we want. We just have to feel a thing. Yeah. And like it, it takes a lot of sort of self-knowledge to figure out, oh, what I really need is to feel this right now. Can you let me feel it? Yeah. Not I need a cure for it. Or sometimes it's, oh, I actually need a solution to this. Yeah. So like give me a hug and then tell me how to fix it. <laughs> And the beautiful thing about self-knowledge is it then helps us to understand others. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm in touch that, hey, when I'm upset, I just need someone to hug me. What? Could I have a hug? No. Give me a hug. No way. Come here. I'm not coming over there. Let's go. Forget it. Pronto. I've had an experience with my wife where she told me, when I'm angry with you, I need you to put your arms around me. And I'm like, really? She says, yeah. And I'm like, but you give me that look that makes me think you're going to murder me. Yeah, this seems like a real good way for me to get kneed in the crotch. <laughs> Are we satisfied? Almost. Oh! <laughs> She's like, no, when I'm most angry is when I need you to hug me. And it just goes against my, because what I get in that moment yeah. is back away slowly. Sure. And angry but, bear, her, yeah. but her voicing that is very powerful to me. Right. Because now I know what to do. And with my kids, they're not going to voice that because they don't know to. They, they don't have the skill set. Yeah. yeah, they're just feeling all this. And part of being a patient parent or caregiver or teacher, anyone who's, who's dealing with kids, is recognizing that see past the behavior to the feeling. Because the behavior is what you are going to rush to correct. Right. And I say in our Fight Less, Connect More class, which is on our membership site at thecinematherapy.com, but we talk about uh, the importance of seeing past the behavior to the emotion. We try and correct behavior before we validate, before we empathize and connect, and people put the walls up. And this is just as true for children. Children will receive feedback and correction if they feel respected and loved, just like adults. And that, of course, reminds me of the greatest romantic comedy of all time, Shaun of the Dead. Liz mostly just needed validation. She needed a, a little bit of behavior change from Shaun as well. Yeah. But Liz grew in her ability to communicate as well. Thank you, Storyblocks, for sponsoring this episode. Storyblocks helps creators like me create more video content and make it awesome like Michael Bay. Awesome pussycat. Awesome barbecue. Awesome pull. My own personal savior. They've got a huge library of royalty-free footage. The biggest. Biggest of, it's not of the footage, biggest. It's big. sound effects, music. It's demand-driven, so they're constantly updating it with new material. They're also committed to increasing representation with lots of diverse and inclusive content, not just what's on screen, but also created by people from a variety of backgrounds as well. Anything created by animated characters. Now how about some color, stupid? Hey! <laughs> No, it's a blind spot for Storyblocks. They're getting there. Nobody's perfect yet. You can get unlimited downloads. They've got subscriptions to fit every budget. And they're flexible so you can scale to fit your project's needs. Gosh. They're more flexible than this. Oh boy. So click the link below, storyblocks.com forward slash cinema therapy and get creating oi, oi, today. Today. So now her sister's, Sorry. May's sister has found her. Well, May's sister is finding her, here we go. With the help of a cat bus. <laughs> oh, how the arms stick out for balance. The world's <laughs> greatest public transportation system. Meow. May! Sasuke! The eye! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're okay. I'm sorry. It's this close to creepy. Yeah. Were you trying to take your corn to mom at the hospital? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't lecture her. She's just, okay, help me understand why you did this. You're going to take us to the hospital? <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> More buses should be huggable. <laughs> With a big smile. The, the unblinking smile, like I say, it's a step away from creepy. It's, it is creepy, but it's just, it's so lovely. <laughs> Look, mom's okay. Oh. Look at mom. She's okay. Everything must be okay. Just all the different legs holding the tree. I'm going to hurry up and get well. That's the spirit. Huh? How did they get it that close without making a noise? Who left this? 
Well, if there's one thing I know about four-year-olds, it's what is they're it? great at sneaking. It's true. Are yours? Mine are terrible at it. Uh, mine are great at it sneaking when they want to be, did. but then like they this. will also For mommy. walk into something loud and give themselves away depending on the day. Yay! <laughs> the ins... <laughs> And this is a song you're going to have in your head for the next three weeks. <laughs> you're welcome. That is so cool. Yeah. I love this movie so much. It's so sweet. There's not a ton going on in this movie. It's just beautiful art. The design, particularly the creature character design, is, I mean, look at this guy. It is perfect. They they achieved it. They created the world's cutest thing. Totoro's got dead fish eyes. Oh sure. Is there's something uh, something so off about him, and yet the bizarreness is what makes him adorable. That's what makes him adorable. Like the weirdness is what he's, makes he's, it work. Yeah, he's not predictably cute like just your average teddy bear. Like it's, he's looking at both of us at the same he's time. He's looking at both of us at the same time, <laughs> and I am here for it. I love Totoro. Like. I just want more films like this that are just like nice and sweet and kind and don't have, I mean, it doesn't have a lot to say other than that. Yeah, to just be good. It's a very gentle, but also very thorough exploration of understanding the emotions of children yeah. and understanding how to create healthy attachments with children. Our attachment styles are with us throughout our lives, which you can learn more about in this Mended Light video right here. But what I will say is when we are affirming when we are equally imaginative, when we're able to get down on our knees and go into the tree forts, you know, when we're, and, and when we don't shut kids down for being kids, for having imaginations, for enjoying life, for ha having fun, for being loud, they feel loved. Now, yeah, of course, there can be time and a place. I mean, my kids aren't loud in every single place, but I think we lose a lot when we think our role as parents is just to provide. My favorite role as parent is to play. Yeah. And one thing that I realize is it's not just for my kids. When I play with my kids half-heartedly, it's just for them. It's like, oh, okay. But what you're really getting to play time oh, yeah, with your kids, totally. it is incredibly it is, stress relieving. It is stress relieving. It's energizing. I feel younger when I'm done with it until I have to stand up and then my back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to deal with the guilt of I keep put, pawning my kids off. When I play with my kids, I'm like, I'm a good dad. I'm a good dad, damn it. I know. Now, if you love what we're doing here at Cinema Therapy, please share with your friends, like, subscribe, and click the bell. There are a lot of people I've talked to who enjoy our videos, but keep missing videos and have to catch up. Or they say, you should do a video on this film. And I'm like, we did one. We did. Every week you will get a notification on your phone or on your YouTube when you log in saying that you've got something new from Cinema Therapy so you won't miss a thing. And I don't wanna miss a thing. So until next time. Ah! And, and watch movies. Totoro, <laughs>